What's going on ladies and gentlemen? I'm Alex, AKA Alex the Vagabond, and right now I'm on Honeymoon Island in the Cook Islands, and I'm extremely excited to show you the beauty of this incredible country in this video. Stay tuned. Our journey begins at the main island of Rarotonga, population 10,572, where we flew into the international airport in the capital city of Avarua. At just 26 square miles, Rarotonga is the largest of the Cook Islands, made up of volcanic peaks and rainforested ridges protected from the open ocean by a beautiful turquoise lagoon. So after we landed, we headed over to our hotel, the Pacific Resort, to drop off our bags and get a better lay of the land. To do that, we had to go up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, it's a beautiful morning here in Rarotonga and we're starting things off with the Cross Island Trek. It's about seven kilometers. This trek uh, will take us from one side of the island to the other through the needle, which is kind of like the heart of the mountain and the volcano. And um, it's gonna be super fun. It's definitely a great way for us to kind of get our bearings here and start things off with a nice natural walk. So let's go. We are maybe half an hour into the trek. It's really dense foliage in here. Nice and cool in the trees, but there's definitely some humidity and it's raining pretty frequently here this time of year. We're here in December, so trail's a little muddy. It's just crazy how lush it is in here. Yeah, it's really cool. This is going to be a fun little excursion. Are you having fun? Yeah, we're on our way up to the needle. Got a couple mosquito bites, but that's part of it. Let's go. Okay, next stage, the Rorotonga Stair Master, made of tree vines and roots. But uh, this is good, we're getting some elevation. Top of this is around 400 meters, 1200 feet. And the benefit is that it gets cooler both literally and figuratively the higher we go so it's good these these vines are insane though check it out wrapping their way around <sighs> you know they say that most of the time the view is worth the hike. This is definitely the case. The view is unbelievable. We're just in this incredibly lush, densely forested valley, and the view just so expansive. I love it. You gotta get in there, you know? You gotta like put the effort in to get the reward. Wow, well, after a couple of hours, about two hours hiking up here, we've made it to the top of the Needle. This is kind of like the heart of the island, and it's this huge rock monolith just erupting out of the jungle. How are you feeling? 
Good, we're high up here, so I'm holding onto the back of your leg just in case. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't I don't want you going fall. anywhere. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere either. How was it? It's good. Real good. Yeah, it was a nice. It wasn't long. It was like just the right amount of time for a morning hike, and there's an epic view up here. It's stunning. Mm. It's a gnarly hike, though, huh? Gnarly climb. Yeah, it was a serious climb. It's pretty steep, and you're climbing essentially roots of trees the entire time. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the hike is a hundred percent worth it. A couple of tips. If you do come up here, definitely wear proper footwear. We saw some people in flip-flops or jandals as they're called down here. Not a good call. Very muddy. Lots of slippery roots to climb over, but incredible. We're just standing on the edge right here, living life on the edge, and it's beautiful. Look at this view. This is Ita Mata Taakari, which is like coconut milk tuna. It's almost like a poke, but with coconut milk, mm -hmm. and it's by far my favorite thing that I've eaten so far here in the Cook Islands. It's delicious. Bon appetit. After a much needed lunch of delicious seafood and a quick stroll through the local farmer's market where Carrie bought a handmade ukulele, it was back to the hotel for a paddle and a swim to cool off. passenger going stand-up paddle boarding <laughs> just climbed onto my stand-up paddle no big deal hi puppy sup Taxi service complete. Well, it's a beautiful evening at the Pacific Resort Rarotonga here in Muri Beach and it just so happens today, Sunday, right around the corner is a like street market. It's called the Muri Beach Night Market and it's got a lot of different food trucks and um, vendors selling local cuisine. So we're gonna go walk over there and see what's for dinner. dinner, we walked over to the Tavara Nui cultural village to learn more about the traditional songs and dances of the Cook Islands Maori people. relaxed in Rarotonga for a couple more days. 
but then we were back at the airport to catch a flight to the tiny atoll of Aitutaki, home to only 2,000 people, but rumored to be the most beautiful island in the country. Well, we have just arrived to Aitutaki, which is one of the islands here in the Cook Islands. And today we're beginning our exploration of the island. And we're starting off with a cultural tour from Aitutaki Cultural Tours, piled in this cool old Land Rover. And we've come up atop a hill here. Beautiful views out to the ocean and the lagoon. But uh, we're here to learn a bit more about the culture of the Cook Island Maori. And we are going to be learning about an umu. Umu is the traditional cooking method, essentially hot stones. So cooking over hot stones, you put the food on top of the stones and you kind of wrap it all up with banana leaves. And this is gonna be a really, really awesome experience. We're gonna learn how it's done and then we're gonna eat. This is really cool. We're using hot stones uh, that have embers from a fire. Essentially, you put the stones down, you build a fire over it, you let the wood or the coconut husks in this case burn down, and then you remove uh, most of the embers, you leave the hot stones. Then they take a banana root and slice it up and add that over the stones. And that kind of gives the moisture that you need to keep your food moist, but also imparts flavor. Then this is the main show. Looks like we got some plantain bread. banana, yeah, bread fruit, and then you got chicken. What do you got there? I made myself a plate out of coconut leaves. Wow. Weaved it. That's sustainable and biodegradable. It truly is. Our ancestors call it row row. In English term, we call it unification weaving. So out of coconut leaves, there's multiple things we can actually make out of it. First one, you got your plate. Second one, you can actually make basket out of it. And third, you can actually make touches, as you can see on top of our heads. That's the touches, the same method you guys weave it's the same method of this for me whenever i visit new places learning about the local traditional culture is one of the most important elements of travel for me i believe that in this global modern world we're really losing so much of this ancestral knowledge and in lots of cultures, especially ones that didn't have their own forms of writing, all of that was passed down through oral tradition. It's really important to pass that knowledge on. And it really makes me happy to know that there's people here who are taking that ancestral knowledge and passing it on to the next generation. And I think that that is a knowledge that slowly we're losing, but it's so important to hold on to. So it's really interesting to come here and, and to learn more about it. time to eat. It smells really, really good. The moment of truth has come. We've pulled off all the banana leaves and it's time to eat. So we're gonna go grab our coconut leaf plates that we wove ourselves 
then we're gonna come back here and grab lunch. Okay, well, two hours have come and gone and it's time to eat. We've just removed all the banana leaves off the top of the umu and we have perfectly cooked breadfruit. We have plantain and we have some chicken and it looks and smells delectable. All served on the plates that we wove ourselves from coconut fronds. So very natural. This, I, I honestly, I don't think it gets much more natural and from the earth, literally, than this. I'm excited. out here on this little sand it's just a sandbank really and um, you know a couple of coconut trees over there that have decided to call this place home but apart from that a few birds not much else this place is incredible this feels the farthest away from life back in Los Angeles or in any of those mega global cities and it's nice to come to places like this and just remember that this big beautiful blue planet we live on it still exists and it's what's real and coming here is just extremely grounding you know it's nice we're the only people out here right now and it's easy to kind of imagine what what it must have been like to be some of the first Polynesians to arrive here over a thousand years ago. How's it? Collecting shells currently. The water is so warm. It's beautiful on this little sandbank here. We're on Honeymoon Island, which is kind of funny because we're getting married in five months and we're not on our honeymoon, but it feels like a pre-honeymoon because now I'm like thinking we should be here five months later because this is the most beautiful spot to have your honeymoon. <laughs> this beautiful crystal clear water is calling my name, so I think it's time to hop in, go for a swim. Today is super special. We are on the edges of the Aitutaki Lagoon and we are with our guide Rua from Itu's Way. We're going fly fishing for bonefish. Bonefish are some of the world's most sought after sport fish. It's all catch and release, but uh, this is gonna be super, super awesome. I've never done this before, neither has Carrie. Both of us are adamant fly fisher men and women for trout back home. Um, I have done a little bit of saltwater fly fishing for like bass and stuff, but nothing like this. So this is gonna be really, really awesome. Plus the surroundings, like I don't think you could ask for a more beautiful place to go fishing. I've never seen so many different shades of blue and turquoise before, but it's a beautiful day and uh, we're gonna get the 
get the rods out, see if we can't catch some fish. And so where the water starts to turn milky, between the blue and the brown, that's kind of the sweet spot for the fish. What are they imitations of? Shrimp? Shrimp. They like those uh, little shrimp and a uh, little bit of worms. We just uh, casting around. Uh huh. And then you slow strip. Slow yeah. retrieval? Yeah, always slow. We parked the boat at One Foot Island where I grabbed a rod and started fishing. But with scenery like this, it was really hard to pay attention. After a little while, I finally got a bite, but when I reeled it in, I found out it wasn't a bonefish, but a strange creature I'd never seen before. Our guide called it a tube fish. I'm not quite sure what type of fish it was, but it definitely looked like a tube. We let it go and hightailed it back across the lagoon just before a huge rainstorm hit, which kept us inside during most of the afternoon, but treated us with an incredible sunset that evening, followed by something unexpected at dinner. day I woke up, poured a cup of coffee, and sat down to write about my experiences in my journal. The Cook Islands are the type of place we see in our dreams, but rarely in reality. These islands are a place where life is carefree and abundant, where the ocean meets the land in a serene and beautiful dance of coral and rainforest, where rock and water are locked in an eternal embrace. This place casts a spell on you, and once you're in its grasps, it'll hold you in wonder forever. I just feel lucky to have been here. Thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe with notifications enabled if you haven't already, and go check out my Cook Islands travel guide video where I share all the information you need to know before your visit. So with that, I'm going to say goodbye, and remember, travel farther, fail smarter, and never give up. Peace.